He's kind of a big director, and that means that he has a lot of people between him and me, basically. And I think we are on the 117th revision of this shot before Ang Lee finally got to see it. And he's like, no, let me see some of the others. And he ended up choosing version 15. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so um, what are some of the projects that you've been able to just call the shots? Like, been able to just kind of go crazy with whatever you wanted to do? Honestly, it's, it's one of the reasons I like the smaller stuff, the indie things, and it, local films when I've got to work on on those, because generally they give me a lot of free reign, which it's one of those things if you're hiring people in any industry, if, if you're paying them money, you assume that they are an expert in what they do, so you kind of just let them do that with some form of guidance. Uh, but like I said, the bigger, the, the more money there is, the more people concerned. So. Do you have one that you prefer over the other? Uh, yeah, I like the small stuff. Yeah, and I mean, tonight, uh, I like horror films. Because just nine times out of 10, they're the most innovative on a shoestring budget. You know, you just get some of the coolest stuff out of them. Do you have a favorite horror film you worked on? Do you have a list of any that you worked on? Uh, I, I haven't got to work on a ton, but the favorite's gonna be The Conjuring. Um, I, it was one of my earlier projects, and it was at a smaller studio, and James Wan like knew the producer, and so, James Wan, the director, was in there a ton. And like some of the footage we got to like <laughs> film in the back room, with, like chopping off parts of a wig and throwing on the ground so we can pause it in when a gal's getting like her hair pulled, you know, drug across the floor and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun because it just kind of felt like filmmaking I had done with my friends where we were just all kind of messing around and figuring it out. Did I also read that you had done some work on Fear the Walking Dead? Did you do yes. some of that too? What did you do that with that? Uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park, and as part of the uh, promotion for Jurassic World when that was coming out, they re-released Jurassic Park as a 3D with like the glasses and all that, and I got to work on the crew that converted that over to 3D, and so I'm like, I'm touching footage where it's like, hey, we know this has been in the movie for 20 years, but remove that water spot that hits the camera whenever the helicopter comes down and Hammond and all them, you know, I was like, do I need to? I just, kind of in there, but it was also cool because we got to see the full plane. Like the footage you see on screen is always cropped to some extent. And, and so we could see like, you got the velociraptor legs running, but you can also see the dude who's in the velociraptor legs right above that. Or like the wires coming out of the bottom of the brontosaurus's neck and that sort of thing. So it was, it was just kind of seeing behind the curtain a little bit. Did that enhance or take away from your experience with Jurassic Park? In that case, it enhanced. In the Muppets, it detracted <laughs> to see two guys in green outfits marching Miss Piggy along so it looked like she was walking down the street. <laughs> that is awesome. So what's like one of the strangest projects you've ever worked on? Um, there was a short film called Le Petit Mort which was done by a gal that's mainly a photographer and she only does shorts, but she's got some clout because like Gary Oldman narrated it in her previous one at Bryce Dallas Howard. Super, super duper artsy. And that was the one where they're like, just make it look like Night of the Hunter, you know, and you're, and you're good. But it was, it was a, a woman contemplating life, death, and everything in between, if I remember correctly. So do we want to move into the demo reel now? Uh, oh, I have another question real quick. What's the weirdest request you've ever gotten from a client that um, you can say out loud in this movie? Uh, that gets, knowing the audience, I have to take off some of them. Um, <laughs> there was weird, maybe, like, I uh, worked on the Phase 2 Marvel movies, so like Iron Man 3, Iron Man? Iron Man 3, Captain America, Winter Soldier, all those. But in Iron Man 3, there was one scene where, like, Stuff's gone down, and Tony Stark is calling out the bad guy, and he's saying it right to a dude that's got a cell phone in his face, and he's recording it. And for whatever reason, and I don't recall if it was because they didn't know if they'd get approval from Apple, or one of their sponsors was in direct competition with Apple, but we ended up having to composite in three or four different types of phones in this guy's hand. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, nobody. But for whatever reason, we had to come up with four different shots, four different phones, and send it off. And I honestly don't remember which one they picked for the final movie. Okay.
muzzle flash, painting on wires. And like I said, none of them have the, the screens on their helmets, that's all later. And obviously, if we put a planet in behind her. Awesome, awesome muzzle flash or explosion. And then uh, one of these shots coming up here is where the actors were not able to actually be there on the same day, so they just put the two shots together right there. So, yeah, that's. So, admittedly, a bit of an improvement with the final product. <laughs> 